In the vision vehicles, uh, we were able to really think far ahead. Um, as difficult as that is, uh, it also liberates uh, the design team. Because, of course, uh, when we do a vision vehicle, uh, we don't have to get stuck on uh, legal requirements of today or technical possibilities of tomorrow. Uh, with a vision vehicle, we can really imagine uh, how a car or a motorcycle should be in uh, 50 years from now or 100 years from now. You know, it's not a bad stereotype if Germans are being thought of as being perfectionist. And, you know, in my day-to-day, -day, I sometimes when I have international telephone conferences, I come on three minutes late, you know, on purpose. And then I, the first thing I say is, look, I'm trying to get to go against the stereotype of the punctual German, so just to make everybody laugh. But I'm waiting these three minutes, you know, I would have been on time, but I try to go against the stereotype. You know, I really love to come to work every day, particularly here in the headquarters building. You know, it's fantastic architecture. And once you enter the lobby, you have three amazing paintings by one of Germany's foremost painters, Gerhard Richter, that he specifically painted for the lobby in the early 70s. So I say good morning to those paintings every day, and I'm already a happy man when I'm at my desk on the fourth floor. You know, with the BMW Art Car Series, when it started in the mid-70s, it came out of the enthusiasm of uh, Hervé Poulain, together with our uh, BMW Motorsports director, for both racing and contemporary art. Olafur Eliasson, you know, who created as an integral part of his art car um, a book where he asked um, scientists, you know, um, philosophers, uh, psychologists about the future of mobility. You know, the, the New York Times ran an entire page on that project. Actually, you know, our head designer, Adrian van Hoydonk, made mandatory reading for his over 400 designers at BMW. So it's one great example of how we tap into what artists have to tell us in order to, you know, broaden our horizon when it comes to engineering and designing cars. I was now organizing 100 years of BMW. I have seen a lot of pictures of employees that went through the company before me, just in the 20s and 30s. I, I see the, the, the guys, they, they had a wish, they wanted to be the best. There are lots of innovations uh, made by BMW. Perhaps they are not really um, so in the awareness of everybody. When BMW came up in 2016, uh, they were specialized on producing aircraft engines. What do these and types of engines have to do? They must be liable, powerful and light. In 1928, BMW bought a license um, to step into the automobile production. Um, BMW was able in 1939 to create a lightweight frame, a skeleton, with a, a weight of 32 kilos. And this model has been destroyed and we had to rebuild it as a remake. We took aluminium and it was already 48 kilos. So these guys were better than we are now. Ease and boosts are two modes that we have in the vision vehicle. Ease is for those moments where you don't want to concentrate fully on the act of driving. You want to relax or maybe concentrate on something else. And boost is for those moments where you want your typical BMW driving experience. The vehicle will help you become a better driver, become the ultimate driver. In the case of autonomous driving, it's very important that the surrounding around the car knows that the car is driving autonomously and therefore safe. For example, uh, you might be in your car today and you see a cyclist, and just that sort of eye contact gives the cyclist the feeling, okay, the driver saw me, I'm safe. And finally, the companion, something between your assistant and your co-pilot. 
that is a physical object inside is then visible from the outside, also indicating in which mode the car is driving. I think that with BMW, the only constant is change. The, the German philosopher Otto Marquardt once said that every future needs a past. You know, we've proven to be an amazingly successful visionary company in the past 100 years. So we're ready to move forward within the next 100 years, you know, surprising people in terms of technology and in terms of design. So there's no limit to that, to the vision that you might have.